Hey, yo, what's going on, guys? This is Mike Reed here, and you catch me on a very nice and warm afternoon for a yet another tour review. So, um, with that being said, um, as you may have already read the title, you already know what this is. This is a two-in-one Geogon Rising review, and oddly enough, it's going to be on two Geogon, both being rather interesting ones. So, those ones are going to be... First off, we're going to review this guy, uh, Bakugan Geogon's Rising Viperagon. And then afterwards, we got ourselves a Decca Geogon. This is Decca Slugler. Yes, now they do Deccas of the Geogons. So they start doing Deccas around the time of Armored Alliance. And in Geogon Rising, they're not only doing standard core Bakugan releases, but they're also doing Geogon as well. And this just happens to be the one I saw at my local Target, as that's where I got both of these, is at my local Target. So that's pretty cool. Sadly, I was hoping to find Geoforge Dragonoid early, but of course... My stories usually get them around the time they're slated to come out, so do stay tuned for those reviews, um, those being on Geoforce Dragonoid and Ultimate Villoc, because I'm planning on getting both of those and doing reviews on both. But that being said, <laughs> let's shift gears back to Viperagon here, and he does look very nice. Of course, you have your standard sort of logo up in the corner with your nice CG render of Viperagon. Looks very, very interesting. He's sort of like a Viper dragon hydra looking thing he's very strange but shifting over to the back of the box the back of the box is kind of interesting as instead of the big large art this time we have this tiny little cg render of viper dragon right there with the Bekagon gate card and the uh, two little ability and character cards in there. And then it shows the pop-up and Beku action of the Geogon right there. And of course, a bunch of warnings and stuff like that in all different languages. So with that all being said, and of course now with the app on the back as well, let's actually take a look at Viper Agon starting with his gate card, which I'm going to go briefly over because we already seen this gate card before. Let me just shift the camera over. Hold on. There we go. So as you guys can see, it's basically the same card. I believe we got this with, I want to say maybe, was it a regular Bakugan or was it a Geogon? I can't remember. But you guys can let me know in the comments what it was. Uh, those who actually watch these reviews, which I know is very few of you. But still, got some nice uh, stats right there, as we do. With some nice art of Gilator with the little... What do you call these? I think these are called the Twin Thrusters right there, like we've seen before. And of course the back is, all is of course, the same across all the gate cards. Slash the, what is it called? The training cards, I think is what they were called. Back in, what was it, Armored Alliance? Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Next we get an ability card, which of course is a repeat. It is Sonic Scream. We've already seen this before, so not going to go too terribly into it. So, there's that. And then lastly, we get the character card, which is Viperagon, and we get a nice full art render of Viperagon. Again, very, very interesting. It's like a snake hydra thing. Very strange. So it has 500 bees, which is interesting. I said it's standard, like a thousand something bees that these things, would, that most of them have. And of course, you have the 10 damage cost right there. Geogon, as if somehow you somehow could figure out this is a Geogon. And then you have your effect here, which I believe is shield. And then you get, and they, well, if you land on a shield or place it on a shield one core, then you get plus 100 Bs and f minus 5 damage. Okay, that's kind of interesting. So you get more B power, but you lose half of your damage? Interesting. And then you have your energy cost right there, and then you have your standard back and the little effect at the bottom. So with that all being said, let's take a look at Viperagon himself, and it looks very cool actually in this sort of cylindrical, almost like a, it's almost like a small disc almost. Like it, like it's like it's verging on the edge of of a disc, but also somewhat like a cylinder. It's it, it's very strangely shaped, but I do like the colors on it with the sort of green and the black and uh, the yellow on it. Those look very very nice. I do like the fact that there's just a big peg hole on the back there, or on the top I should say. Those look very nice. But with that being said, let's go ahead and activate this Geogon and see what he looks like. 
And there you go, that is Viperagon. And Viperagon looks really cool in this tiny little snake dragon thing. I like that the tail is pretty much has the same head as the top one. And I think the dopey little wings are a nice little accessory to it. Um, or like, not even, not accessory, but like accent to it. And let's get a close up look at this guy, shall we? Let's take a look at that head sculpt. Very nicely molded head sculpt on Viperagon. And it even detailed the neck as well. And the tiny little baby hands and the weird chest plate looks very nice. Tiny little baby wings, flappy flappy. So that's always fun. And then you have his tail, which of course has another head on the end. And you can sort of whip that around, I guess. You can attack dudes with it. So that's fun. And he's actually fairly small compared to the Geogon, at least from what I can tell anyway. But of course, we'll have to wait and see with the comparisons, which we are going to start with. Let's do, let's go in Ventus order, actually. Let's start with Ventus, and then we'll work our way down. So here's Ventus Talon next to Viperagon. And as you guys can see, Talon is much, much larger than the, than the small little Viperagon. I'm actually kind of surprised at how small he is, especially considering he is a, he was one of the earliest uh, Geogon that was revealed for Geogon Rising. Um, f to my knowledge, anyway, he was one of the first ones ever revealed for the, for this, um, season so i'm kind of surprised at just how tiny he is and for our next comparison let's bring in standard talon or regular version talon that's non-diamond so i don't know why i had to i don't know why i said it like that but you guys get the gist so again size is uh, kind of is, is uh, considerable uh, but then again, Viperagon is supposed to be a snake dragon thing, and I believe even in the show he's a, he's a smaller Geogon compared to the others, so I guess that's fair that he would be this sort of short, stocky little snake dragon. So, I can't complain. He is cool, he is dope, he is small. I like him. <laughs> but you guys already knew that, because if I didn't like him, I wouldn't have bought him, now would I? <laughs> For our next comparison, let's go with our next smallest Geogon. I kind of have to shift him out of the way. And that is Arachnia. And again, you guys can get the gist of the size between these two small, small boys. Well, actually small boy and small girl, so works out <laughs> for these two. Um, and again, these are some of the earlier Geogon, to my knowledge. But still, it's nice that not all of them are just really, really big, I guess. And a couple of them are somewhat small and more, and their size is more akin to a standard Bakugan. But still, it's different. For our next comparison, we're going to bring in Darkest Hyenix. One of my favorite designs, if you guys didn't know. He's one of my favorite Geogon in the entire lineup that I've seen up to this point but of course there are a couple that i like more than them uh than the standard geogon but of course i'll talk about those once we actually get to those to those aforementioned two packs those being well those sort of capstones that being um geoforce dragonoid and ultimate villoc as the geogons in those are really really dope not gonna lie uh, most of them, at least in the Geoforce Dragonoid capstone set, are gonna are definitely gonna be repeats. But they've actually been slightly redesigned, which I thought was kind of cool for them. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna spill too many more details on it, as I want to give my full thoughts when I actually get them and do a proper review on them. But just know that I'm gonna be really, really excited to review those, and I'm really looking forward to that. And I think they're coming out next month, because that's usually when Capstone for this uh, Bakugan Reboot series uh, show up these days. They usually show up around August, so looking forward to that. But anyway, next up here for the for the Geogon, we're going to bring in Montrepod. And as you guys can see, Montrepod is still stupidly big. My god. <laughs> he barely even hits my phone, and my phone's not that far away from them, actually. So I'm surprised that he didn't just completely just get stuck on my phone. Oh, jeez, he's crawling up on my finger, his tail. <laughs> but there we go. And so that is Geogon Rising Viperagon for you guys. But of course, he's not the only one we're going to be looking at today. And of course, uh, we will be... And, and at the end, I will be doing comparisons with the two Geogons uh, with... 
the standard Becca gun. So before any of you in the comments, you know, oh, you forgot to compare the Viper Dragon with the other Becca gun. Don't worry, I have not forgotten. So let's move this out of the way. And let's take a look at the second one in this in this twofer I got here. That being Geogon Deca Slugler. So kind of interesting. I was originally planning to get the if it wasn't the diamond one, which looks really cool. Uh, at least in my opinion, even though it's just a very slight color change, but still, um, well, very slight and by, I mean, they just kind of brighten the colors in some areas, but, or that, or the standard one, but I got the standard one, just DECA size, so, this is my first ever DECA Geogon, so I'm pretty happy with them, so you guys can see, you still have the standard Geogon Rising logo right there, with a really nice CG render of Slugler, I know he's more like a snail, but, the snail octopus thing, but, I'm not gonna question it, so, they, they, Bakugan are aliens after all, so, makes sense, <laughs> So, Geogon Deca, we have the name right there, Slugler, and of course we have the little silhouette of the things that you get included with this guy. So, shifting over to the back of the box, and you guys will see, these Deca Geogon, at least this one that I have, hopefully I'll get more of these, um, are definitely a pretty considerable size these things so here we have slugler right there on oh, nice cg render of him in his open form we do get an exclusive deca beku core which of course is slugler we get the card right there which of course is the character card and we do get the pop open beku action and the other decas that they have right now which i believe is deca talon stingser and of course slugler i'm surprised they haven't done any diamond decas for these geogon yet maybe they'll start doing them soon i would prefer them to do maybe if they were going to do deca geogon i would actually prefer them to do like i don't know something like oh, oh wait have they done deca viper again i think they've done him yeah uh, i was about to say maybe they could do like a deca viper again okay they've already done that i'm, I'm an idiot <laughs> so let's take a look at what get what's included with this guy and we don't get much so first up is the deca baku core which is of course slugler and of course we get a nice render of slugler on there now uh well, last time we saw a deca baku core was actually with my Arn alliance deca dragonoid which is my which was my first ever deca so now i have two decas in my collection at this point so for comparison, here is that Bakugor that came with him, so you guys can see how these two look together. Again, not too terribly, not too terribly bad. Of course, I think the art quality is a bit better on this one than this one. But then again, it's it, it could be it is possible that the camera is just making it look a bit faded. But there we go. And of course, on the back we have the Bakugan Jogan Rising logo, as compared to on the original Armor Alliance version, we have just the Armor Alliance logo with the sort of hexagonal hive matrix sort of background on it, which is very nice. So, putting that down there, we also get the character card, which is Slugler. And again, we get a nice art render of Slugler on there with the 500B power and the 4 damage cost with, of course, the Geogon name, just in case you somehow didn't know that Slugler was a Geogon. And, of course, we get the effect right there, which I believe that is Shadow Strike, I believe. I remember reading somewhere that that symbol means Shadow Strike. And then we have the, what's it, the Helix Core, and when you land on that, or if you happen to drop one, drop Slugler on that, you get a plus 900 B power. So the kind of funny thing is, with these Dekas, you can actually use them, I, I believe, but of course, they're not recommended, considering how just massive they are. But there you go, and then you have the plus 2 energy cost right there, and on the back you have your standard sort of back and your little effect symbol right there or how to activate and deactivate the card during the game so with that being said let's take a look actually at the toy itself so here is deca slugler all closed up and again very nice attention to detail as the whole purpose of these decas i believe is to just be like a large sort of like collector thing i guess but still, uh, they're really, really nice. I like how he has little eyes detailed, and each of the eyes is, like, looking in different directions. I think that's kind of a nice little bit of attention to detail there. And on the back, we get a massive darkest uh, symbol right there, right on his back. So, really do like that. The one thing that I really don't like about Slugler, though, 
is if it isn't obvious, that's his head right there. That's his. They didn't even try to, to like put a flap over his head or anything. He's just like, hello. <laughs> He's just staring at you through his closed form. So that's kind of fun. But anyway, let's take a look at what Geogon, lo Geogon Slugger looks like when he's all opened up. Okay, there we go. <laughs> all right, let's try that again. Hold on. I kind of messed that up. All right, so let's drop him again. There we go. <laughs> and there is Geogon Slugler. And again, very, very interesting design. He's not really a slug, but he's more like a snail octopus thing. I like how oddly spiky he is. He definitely reminds me of another uh, Bakugan from the Legacy series. What's his name? Balaton. There we go. Balaton. I used to have him. Uh, sadly, I never got a... What was it called? Uh, what was it? Hexstar, I think is what its name was. The other version that came out around that same time frame. So that's kind of fun. And of course, on his back, you do have... Um, you have Armor Alliance ports on his back, and I believe you have them on the arms. Yeah, you have them on the arms, too, sort of parts. So that's fun. And on the back, you have his shell, which is very nicely detailed, sort of spiky looking. And the face is interesting. He got like a tri, like a trinocular vision going on there with his mouth and everything there. And let's see what the bottom looks like. Let's see. Does he, are those detailed on the bottom as well? I focus camera. Yes, they are. He does. Uh, the camera's not picking it up, but there actually are little details of like little eyes down here as well. Very, very interesting. I'm surprised they kind of skipped out on these little spikes. They didn't color these all green because it would look really cool if you had just all green of you know, these little nubby things. But nah, it works. So does he actually have the B power listed on him somewhere? Let's see. Where would it be? I would assume it would be on one of the wings. Or maybe you can't use this during during an actual duel, or brawl, I should say. That sucks. Okay, so maybe you can't actually use them. They're more for just display things. But, okay, still, at least you can use the card anyway, so that's fun. Let's see, did the other guy have it as well? No, actually, the, I, actually I made a... I made a wrong assumption there. Uh, no, they don't actually have the B-Powers on them, so no, you can't actually use them during an actual duel, I guess. So, that was completely wrong, so... Oops. <laughs> but still, uh, very, very nice looking. Now, for comparison of size, let's just bring in Viperagon that we were looking at earlier. So you can see here just how massive... Um, Deca Slugler is. Of course, Slugler, even in his normal form, isn't all that big. And my god, he's actually weighing down my turn, my turnstile here. Or not turnstile, but my little turntable here. But still, very, very nice uh, detail on Slugler here. I cannot complain. So for our next bit of comparisons, I think we're going to just do... We're going to start off first with the other Deca I have. So hold on a minute. Here's got to close up my bragging. So let's bring in the other Deca. Oh, God, this is going to be so hard to show off. So here are the two Decas together. Oh, God. How am I going to show this? How am I going to show this? Wait. Okay, so here's him. And then how am I going to... Okay, I'm guessing I'm going to have to squeeze him in like that. But I guess you guys can still get the idea of the sheer size of these two. So you can see uh, the size is definitely different. So uh, I did not realize just how big the <laughs> Dragonoid is as compared to the tiny little Slugler next to him. Well, not tiny, but relatively medium-sized Slugler next to him. So I definitely cannot complain with these two there so here you have that and i think at this point i think we can now go into doing comparisons with the other geogon with slugler so let's bring him back in and let's do some comparisons so we're already comparing with viper again so let's go next with let's do oh jeez <laughs> Now, why would he stick on to the thing? Okay, here we go. Here is Ventus Diamond Talon. I know this review is going completely sort of, you know, cattywampus right now. I completely get it. But still, you guys can get the idea of just how big Slugler is. He is just a really, really big boy. My God. 
<laughs> Not only that, but like, my god. He's basically the job of the hut of Bakugan, let's be honest, guys. He's basically job of the hut, just not job of the hut. But anyway, for our next comparison, let's bring in oh god. <laughs> Say guy there, Talon, don't be falling apart on me. <laughs> Let me get the other guy in here. Yep, here is standard Talon. So you guys can see the difference between those two. Again, the size isn't really much of a difference as much as it is the coloring, so. But still, Slugler is just, I'm, I, he is just really, really large. I know I keep, like, you know, repeating myself over the course of this review, but, you know, I gotta make it clear here that he's just really, really big. My god. So, and I'm kind of surprised that they even did a deco of this guy, but still. He's cool. I cannot complain. Next up here, we're going to bring in Tiny Little Arachneus. Now we have our two bug Geogon together. So, cannot complain <laughs> there, except, of course, as I keep saying, the size is definitely a difference. And I swear that's the last time I'm going to say it, as I know it's getting repetitive. So, there we go. And yeah, uh, if you guys can, can, you know, if you guys can notice... Or, you know, if you, if you haven't noticed, then I'm just, you know, letting you guys know of it now. Slugler is weighing down my turnstile here. <laughs> Turn table. So, there you go. That's fun. And then there you have Montropod right there. And still, Montropod is still the largest of the Geogon. And you know what? If they haven't done a deck of Montropod already, they should do it. <laughs> because this thing could get so much bigger. Just imagine a deck of Montropod. That thing would be absolutely massive. I think he would just completely just swipe down all of my Samus's back there. So... So yeah, my Samus is better watch out back there as if Deca Montropod ever shows up. Yeah, they're getting they're getting knocked right off the table. <laughs> so that's gonna be fun. But for our last comparison Geogon wise, here is Geogon Hyenix. So you can see those two together. Now did I call him Hyenix when I first brought him up here? If I did, that was dumb. <laughs> He's actually pronounced Hyenix, so but there you go. So, I don't know if I mispronounced him or not, but if I did, there you go. So, let's move him out of the way. And let's move swiftly on to Bakugan comparisons, the standard Bakugan comparisons with Slugler here. Then we'll quickly shift gears back to Viperagon, and then we're going to close out this review. So, let's go ahead and start first with... Uh, you know what? Let's we'll start with Dragonoid. We're going to start with him. Why not? Because I love Elemental Rare Dragonoid. You guys know. This guy's one of my favorites of the standard Bakugan for Geogon Rising. But there you go. And as you guys can see, again, color and size are definitely different. But still, not too bad looking for a Geogon, so cannot complain. So closing up Dragonoid here, and of course he's not going to close properly. Can you close properly? Thank you. Okay. Let's move on to Pyrus Falcron. Let's do him next. So let me just pop him open and get him all folded out. There we go. So here is Falcron with him. And again, you know, <laughs> size and color are different. There you go. But moving him off to the side here. Next, we're going to bring in, I believe, you know what? Let's actually switch things up. I was just going to go in the order I have them have them organized in my little uh, tackle box setup I have with my Bakugan. But let's go ahead and shift gears. Let's actually go into Ventus. Let's go into Ferascal, actually. Oh, jeez. <laughs> So here is Ferascal with him, Slugler, so there you go. Very, very nice. Again, um, out of all of the Bakugan reboot seasons, and there's only been three, I think Jugon Rising has one of the more interesting art styles for this, for this reboot series. 
And, you know, because I love the fact that it's, you know, that it's futuristic, but it's not like just being futuristic just for the sake of being futuristic. It's futuristic whilst keeping true to the, you know, to the basis, to the main inspirations for each of these, each of the character designs for this season. So, I like that. As our Alliance did get a bit repetitive for me after a while, you guys could probably tell, but... Yeah, some of the designs started to get a bit repetitive, but with each one of the Geogon Rising, Vekagon, let alone, the, and especially the Geogon, I'm just really impressed by just how many complex different designs they can get, especially out of multiple different shapes. And even for the standard spherical Vekagon, I'm impressed at just how much detail they can get out of these things for the size that they're at. So here we have Nilius with Slugler there. So... There you go. And again, as I said before, Nilius, one of my favorite designs of Geogon Rising thus far. But of course, there is a couple of other specific uh, capstone figures that I think look better and like miles better than the standard Bekagon. But of course, again, please stay tuned for that review um, and for my you know complete thoughts on those particular capstones. Because I have very, very positive things to say, especially for what we know about them thus far. And probably once I actually get them in hand, I'm going to have even more positive things to say. But next up here, we have Chaos... Uh, what is this? <laughs> oh, why did I blank on the name? Chaos Fenica, there we go. Chaos Fenica Ultra. Brain fart, that's fun. So there you have those two together. Let's just love it when you have brain farts, guys. It's totally not like the most annoying thing ever, <laughs> especially during these, especially during a, you know, tour review video like this. <laughs> As you guys know, I hate sounding stupid. I really do. So, for our last comparison, at least for standard Bakugan, let's bring in Demorg here for comparison. So you guys can see how those two look together. So... Not too terribly bad um, for these two. But next up here, we're going to shift gears over back to Viperagon for a minute, as we have to do comparisons with him and his other stater Bekagon brethren. And while Stamwork is actually out here, you know what? We're going to do comparisons starting with him. So that's going to work perfect. So where is Viperagon? There he is. And we're actually just going to use this Bekagor. Let's just flip it over real quick. Yeah. I'm just going to use this for... Oh, God. Don't stick to the thing. <laughs> Comparison. So here we have Viperagon with Demorc. So you can see the size difference between the two of them. So definitely cannot complain with with that. But again, you guys now can really see that, yeah, Viperagon is definitely around the same size as the standard Bekagon. Which is interesting. So... At least to me it is. That not all the Geogon are just massive Cthulhu-level creatures that that are summoned into battle now. Some of them are just standard Bekagon size. So, that's fun. For our next comparison, let's bring in Drago. Crap. Let's bring in Dragonoid Ultra Elemental Rare version. So you guys can see. The difference between those two. Oh god, the camera's all wonky. There we go. So there you guys can see the difference between those two right there. Not too terribly bad looking. My god, this review has gone on for 28 minutes. My god. I'm surprised that I'm surprised that even that that even a few of you actually watch these tour reviews for as long as these are. And, uh, again, I ask that you let me know in the comments, guys. Do you guys enjoy these tour reviews? Do you want me to just stop doing these? Let me know in the comments below. Definitely. Because, honestly, you know, if you guys aren't enjoying these tour reviews, just feel free to let me know. That's all I, that's all I really need to say. I was going to go and evaluate, no, not evaluate, but, you know, elaborate a bit more. But why well, do I need to elaborate on something so basic, you know? <laughs> But next up here we have Pyrus Falcron Ultra right there with the, with the tiny little Viper Agon. My god. But still. Nice size. Um, nice stature for Viper Agon there. I'm surprised that Viper Agon is even taller than Falcron. 
That's that's kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and close up Falcron here. If it'll actually stay closed, thank you. All right, let's blast through the next couple back gun here. So next up here is Fenico. So let's go ahead and oh god, speed that up a little bit so you guys can see the difference between those two there. There we go. Next up, we're going to bring in, oh geez, Ventus Ferrascal. So you guys can see the difference between those two right there. Next up here, we're going to bring in Darkest Nilius Ultra. And again, Nilius is still a short boy. <laughs> I don't know what it is with him this season, but he's just really, really short. <laughs> I mean, he's barely taller than Vibragon. That's kind of... That really kind of sets... That really kind of puts it to scale with just how, you know, small... Nilius really is if even if even a Geogon is barely even just if you know if he's just barely a bit shorter than Nilius that's kind of interesting but lastly we're gonna bring in no oh god open properly there we go Darkest Demorc Ultra so and also quickly in the comments I'm just gonna ask am I pronouncing Demorc's name right is it Demorc or Demorc which one is it am I pronouncing it wrong this whole time let me know back again aficionados in the comments below am I pronouncing Demorc's name wrong is it Demorc or Demorc or is it just a completely different pronunciation altogether because <laughs> I, I meant to ask this in, in previous videos but I just kept forgetting to ask <laughs> if I'm pronouncing it wrong or not because I'm hoping I'm not, I haven't been pronouncing it wrong this whole time because otherwise, I'm going to look like a big stupid. But, there you go. So with that being said, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this review on Bakugan Geogon's Rising. Oh, God. <laughs> Ventus Viperagon and Darkest Slugler Decca Geogon. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on this video. Oh, God. This has a like button on this video, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that way you guys get notified for all my uploads. Later, Reese Squad, and have a good one.